I don't care what you're facing. God can navigate you through the worst of times. God already knows what you're dealing with, but he's on the ship with you. You have the book of Acts, and you know the book of Acts means the Acts of the Apostles. It actually means the things that God manifested through their ministry. There were 12 apostles that were chosen. You know that. Judas was one of them. Praise God. And by the way, he was chosen. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus knew that one of them would deny him and cause him to be crucified and die. Hallelujah. And Judas himself, after he recognized how he had betrayed the Son of God and it really came to him, he went out, the Bible said, and hung himself. Because he, he knew he had helped to uh, kill the Lamb of God. And so, amen, there were only 11 apostles left. And then in the book of Acts, if you read it, they went, amen, they pulled some, for lack of words, they pulled uh, some straws or pulled something, and they picked another man. Hallelujah. And he became the 12 apostles. Now, quite frankly, I believe that Paul is the 12th one. Hallelujah. The Bible says he was a man born out of time. God raised up the apostle, hallelujah, Paul, to write two-thirds of the New Testament. To, to, he received these words, the scripture says in Ephesians 1 and 18, by what? Revelation. Hallelujah. Amen. And we, we, we might as well uh, get ready. There is revelation knowledge coming to the body because that's going to be the secret weapon, at least one of them, that will help us to destroy the works of the devil. Now, I know 1 John said Jesus Christ was manifested in the flesh that he might destroy the works of the devil. Now, he did it by his death, burial, and resurrection. Hallelujah. But, amen, hallelujah, God then gave the church the assignment to go and do what he, what he did. Amen? So, my assignment is to go and do likewise. Whatever Jesus did, we are commanded, not suggested, but commanded to what? Go. Say that word. Go. go. Jesus said, go ye to what? All the world. And preach the gospel. Amen. Paul says, this same Paul that received revelation from Jesus Christ says that we are, we are all ambassadors for Jesus Christ. We all represent the kingdom of who? God. If you are a believer today, you are an ambassador of Jesus Christ. And you have received the ministry of reconciliation. Reconciling the world that's lost and backslidden where? Back to God. So it's time to get folk back to God. I'm sure you as a believer know some folk, maybe in your family, your friends, your circle of influence that once were serving God have gone where? Back. We have a lot. Paul said it like this. Jesus said it too. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. In the last days, the love of many shall wax what? Cold. Hallelujah. And Paul says, there shall be a what? Great falling away. And you don't fall away from something until you have been a what? Part. So amen. That's why I don't believe one saved always saved. Hallelujah. Amen. How can you fall away from something if it's going to keep you forever? Now, does God have the power to keep you saved forever? Yes. But it's a choice. Look at your neighbor and say, have you chosen this week? Oh yeah, you made some choices this week about what? Righteousness. Because every day you live, you're confronted by the devil trying his best to what? Tear you down. Make you give up on what? Righteousness. Make you choose the wrong way. Can somebody say amen to that? And, 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 and by the grace of God, we've had the blood where when we chose this week and made an error or made a fail God, we can go to God. Hallelujah. We have an advocate, the man Christ Jesus. We can go to him and say, God, I'm what? Sorry. First John said, we confess our sin. God is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from what? All unrighteousness. Say, I am forgiven. And if I'm not, I have the opportunity to be forgiven. If you're here this morning, you're not saved. You're a backslider. You're a person that never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. The greatest decision you're going to make is not to get a, a degree to make millions of dollars or travel all over the world, have the biggest house on all the continents of the world, Amen. Have all the friends in the world know the greatest decision that all of us would make is making Jesus the Lord of our lives. Hallelujah. Amen. Because Jesus becoming the Lord of your life assures you of eternal what? Life. Say live forever. I want to live how long? Forever. 
And I don't mean apart from God. I mean with God. Because people are going to live forever whether they with God or not. Hallelujah. People say, I hear young people say, man, when you're dead, you're done. No, baby, when you're dead, you just beginning. Hallelujah. Because if you die without God, amen, you'll spend eternity apart from God. And how many know it ain't, amen, it ain't, amen, it ain't what's happening being away from who? God. We all need God. So we all need God. Yeah, we need them desperate. This, these are desperate times, and it demands desperate measures. You got to become desperate about your relationship with God, desperate about doing the will of God. The world is lost and going to hell by the millions. And the church sometimes is sitting back comfortable in that we've been saved and we're not concerned about nobody else. But love, hallelujah, bears what? All things. Love what? Believe in what? All things. So it's time for our love to spring up in our hearts and begin to go outside of our confinement of our home or our circle of influence and go touch the world. Somebody said, touch the world. Hallelujah. I know I said Acts 1 and 8. I'm going there. Just hold on for a minute. Amen? Hallelujah. Jesus raised up these 12 apostles and gave them a great commission. He said, go ye into what? All the world and preach the what? The gospel. The gospel is the what? Good news of Jesus Christ. It's not bad news. It's what? Good news. If the word of God comes and deals with a sin in your life or mine, and it doesn't come to bring condemnation, it comes to bring conviction. Hallelujah. Amen. He came to convict the world of sin, to reprove the world of what? Sin. Not to condemn us, but to save us. He said God came to save us. Glory to God. All of us in here this morning need a savior. Every person, little boy, little baby, all need a what? Savior. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. And when I said Jesus sent them out, amen. Hallelujah. He told them to go out and he sent them out while he was in ministry with them. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. And whenever Jesus went, the apostles were winning with him and they saw him work signs and miracles and wonders. Hallelujah. Why did he do that? So they would know to, amen, mimic or to do what he did whenever he left. Shout hallelujah. One day the, uh, these people were fasting. They were upset. And they came to Jesus and wanted to inquire, why are your disciples not fasting? Hallelujah. You don't need to be on a fast when the Son of God is walking there with you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. They didn't need no fasting. Fasting is what enhances our life and empowers us and gives us a great anointing. But while Jesus was walking with them, they had all they needed. So there was no need for them to fast then. Now, Jesus said, the time is coming where they will fast. Say, so that time is now. How many know that there are people that got demons in them? I say that again in case you were scared. I said, how many know there are people that have demonic spirit? Where? In them. And God told the church to do what? Cast them what? Out. Freely you have received, not freely what? Give. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Cast out devils. Cast what? Devils out. Hallelujah. Some of our children' behavior, hey amen, is not just an influence, it's a demonic spirit. If that child has not been born again and their behavior is to be totally rebellious and stubborn, something is in there. Hallelujah. And sometimes we want to talk it out. You can't talk no demon out unless God is saying by the Holy Ghost, commanded the court, come out. Otherwise, you got to have something to what? Get him out. And hallelujah, and standing in the corner and not letting them play this and not letting them do that, it's not going to get rid of that demon. It might, they might mask good behavior. How many know you can mask looking like God, but not really be like God? Hallelujah. Our children can mask acting like they understand and they're going to do right. But on down the road, what's in them show up. Come on now, y'all. I know I'm preaching good. Not only our children, but us. Whatever is not deal with, will, dealt with will what? Show up. If you got malice in your heart, you may bask it for a while and oh, oh, hey, how you doing, sweet? But in time, it's going to what? Come out. Because that spirit that's in there wants to what? Come out. The devil don't embody people without wanting to what? Use them. Come on now, hallelujah. You say, why are you talking about demons? Because I'm going to talk about what? Power. Say, Power. That's what I want to deal with, power this morning, amen? But why do you need power? Why, why is it necessary? Our children, amen, and our loved ones, and our, our, our people are, uh, that, that in our circle are, or outside of our circle, we run into people all the time that's got something in them that's not right. 
Come on, somebody. Mark chapter 5, there was a man, Jesus crossed the ocean or the sea. You know, the storm that came up, the disciples out there with him, they was afraid. And they asked him, do you care not that we perish? How are you going to perish when Jesus is on the ship with you? There's no way to lose when God is what? With you. Say, so I can't lose with the one that lives with me. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I cannot lose. You need to be assured of that. Say, I'm assured of that. What the devil is doing is he's stealing confidence out of the hearts of people, God's people. You know, when you get depressed and get sad and get down, what the devil has done is stolen your confidence. Now, I mean, I stole it forever, but he stole it for that moment or for that day or for that week. And when you like that, you become what? Weak. You become a target. Come on, somebody. I want to say to parents today, amen, hear me well. Praise God. Sometimes, amen, if your child is born again and their behavior is consistently disrespectful and disobedient, there's a spirit on them. You got to fast and pray that what? Get it off. You can't, you can't treat it light-handed. You got to be heavy-handed. Oh, y'all don't want to talk with me. I know you think we all got angels, but ain't none of us got no angels. Hallelujah. I like to think they are. I'm not an angel. Hallelujah. Though she say I am every once in a while. Hallelujah. No, no, no. Hey, Amen. Sometimes our behavior is demonic. Oh, yeah, when you mean and, 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 and unkind to folk and bad mouth and everything, that's not spiritual. That's demonic. That came from a demonic what? Spirit. Come on, somebody. And we need what? Power. Oh, by Shia. Hallelujah. Say, I need something. Hey, Amen. We talking more than we walking. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. God don't want you to just talk about what you have. He wants you to walk what you have. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. You tell you got a 15-year-old child saying, I want to go to church tonight. She ain't got no decision. Amen. I mean, she ain't got no choice. You're the head. You exercise. Authority. Come on, somebody. Let me, let me calm down because I want to take my time and preach this. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Touch your neighbor and say, have you got it? Power. My God, I feel this in my shoes. Glory to God. Come on, somebody. See, the devil, the devil know if we singing about power, but not possessing power. Glory to God. Hold on by Sunday. Oh, my, my, my. Thank you, Lord. Hold on to church today. Going to sing about the power of God. Amen. And, and do little skits and things, but no powers in the church. People are left there still the same. Demon possessed, demon influenced, demon led. That's not God. All of us woo, need some power. So all of us need it. All of us need power. Hallelujah. And I told the parents last week, I know you heard me, but I said again, I said, you need to go home and talk to your children. Little bitty girls, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 21, 70, whatever. Hallelujah. But go home and talk to your children about the Holy Ghost. You talk to them about their grades. You talk to them about their sports thing. Talk to them about the Holy Ghost. Because more than they need to play basketball or football or soccer or go to the Boy Scout, Girl Scout, any other scout, what they really need is who? Holy Ghost. See, I need the Holy Ghost. See, if I'd have had the Holy Ghost a long time ago, especially when I was young, some of them decisions I made, I would not have made them. Why? Because I would have had what? Help. The Bible called the Holy Ghost your what? Helper. So I need help. Now when you cry to God and say I need help, what you said is I need the Holy Ghost. God sent the Holy Ghost to what? Abide in us. To live in you and to what? Help you. Shout hallelujah. I'm ashamed sometimes and embarrassed how people that have children won't correct them. And they spiritual. I want to know what's wrong with that picture. What is that? I just love them. No, if you love them, you will what? Correct them. The Bible said, amen, those whom he loved, talking about us, he also what? Chasten. Now, if God will chasten us, you ought to chasten your what? Child, if they're off. Hey, hey now, how you been doing since you been filled with the Holy Ghost? Let's go on and preach. Hallelujah. I know how you feel. Hallelujah. 
In Mark chapter 5, there was a man there, hey man, Jesus, that came off the sea. He calmed the ocean and told the winds and the waters to be still. Now, if God can tell the wind to be still and the water to be still, he can tell whatever's going on in your life to be what? Still! Whatever it is, say, be still! My, my grandmother, I used to be at the store and just, you know, just running all around. She said, boy, be still. Now, some of y'all too young to know about that, but be still. You know what they're saying? Get quiet. Stop running. Be still. Tell the devil, be still. Be still. I see about 12 of y'all believe that. I said, tell the devil, be still. be still. What you trying to do? Tell him to quit what? Quit acting up. Somebody said, I don't have the power of the devil. You do have power. God gave the church power and authority over all the power of the devil. And the Bible said, nothing, nothing, nothing by any means shall what? Hurt you. Why are there so many hurt people? Powerless. I said, why are there so many hurt people in the church? Powerless. That's why we need what? Power. Oh, power. See, the power of God is not just so we can run around here, you know. I'm all right with that. But it's more than that. It's more than rolling in the floor. I like that, but it's more than that. The power of Hallelujah, the interpretation of power in the Greek means the, it means the ability to get the job done. Glory to God. Whatever is coming against you, God said, ask me for what? Power. Holy Ghost, power. What, will you, what do you have when you have that? You have the ability to get the job what? Done. Whatever you bind on earth shall be what? Bound in heaven. Why that demon loose running around like they wild? Because ain't nobody tied them up. Tie the devil up. Bind the devil. Say, bind them. Say, bind him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, Pastor, I've been feeling so bad. Bind it. Cast it out. Sickness, get out of my body. You know what we do to sickness most of the time? I'm talking believers. We pet it. Bless you. Oh, little, little, little old bitty fever. Little bitty cold. <laughs> cold. We, we just petting that joker. Pain in the back. Stop petting. You know what I said? Pet, P-E-T. Stop petting that thing. You know, like a dog barking too loud. You go get him. You petting him. Trying to get him. You can't pet the devil. Get him out. In Mark chapter 5, young men from uh, 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 Bethel, there was a young man, hallelujah, there, amen, the Bible said he was naked. He was the first streaker. Y'all know what a streaker is, huh? That's back in my day, that's somebody running naked. When you see people half naked now, there's something there that's not balanced. Ah, Bashay. Yeah, I will, I was going to do that. I said, when you see people half naked, something there is not what? Balance! Woo! Closed! And that's all I'm going to say about that. You know, if you have some clothes on where you have naked, some, of, some about that is not what? Balance! I didn't say you wouldn't say. I said something about that character and your presentation is not what it should be. Hallelujah! God don't want you running around here half naked. Hallelujah! Why? Because you represent the who? Lord of Lord and the King of Glory. And the glory of God ought to what? Cover you. Hallelujah. Amen. You're, you're almost shine. That ain't my message. Let me go on. This man running through the graveyard naked. I mean, the Bible said no man could bind him. No man could tame him. They put chains on him. He broke the chain. And sometimes we wonder, why don't our children sometimes that, we, that, that, that have gone away from God, why can't we not get them delivered? Hallelujah. They running wild. Their behavior is unseemly. Their mind is, 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 is polluted. Why? The devil found a place. And now he brought what? Seven more. So, but even seven can be cast out. Hallelujah. This man running through the graveyard naked. Everybody in town is afraid of this man. And there are some people that's got demons in them. You better be afraid of if you ain't got the power. You better not go out and try to tell the devil to come out there, he'll kill you. you know, amen. You know about the sons of Sceva, right? Hallelujah. Amen. 
Praise God. They went to try to get the devil out of, hallelujah, amen, uh, this man. And the man said, the, the devil and the person said, Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. And listen, oh, Shabba. Said the, the Lord knows who's the his. Paul said, the Lord knows them that are what? His. And the devil knows who belong to who? God. I'm talking about in this building right now and on World Wide Web, amen, and television broadcast. The devil knows who belong to God. And if you don't belong to God, it's open season on you. Hallelujah. Well, you say, Pastor, the devil is fighting the church. Yeah, but we have been guarded. We have, we have a wall of protection around us. What is it? The blood. Say that. The blood. We all got blood on us. My. You may not see it on me right now, but the devil sees what? Blood on my life. Why? I gave my life to Jesus, and he watched me in the what? Blood. And the devil trembles at the mention of the name of who? Jesus. Say that name. Jesus. Sometimes I tell y'all to do something, y'all look at me like I'm crazy. The doctor tell you, lick your tongue out, you go, ah, you don't even know him. You ain't got no relationship with him. Come on now. If the doctor gets you to lick your tongue out, the pastor ought to be able to get, be able to get you to say, glory. 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 Hallelujah. Somebody say, power. Come on, come on. Power. Hey. Glory to God. Somebody say, what's the purpose of that? Because revival come with a what? Sound. And the Bible says in the psalm, blessed are the people that know the what? Joyful sound. The name of Jesus is what? Joyful. Hey. Don't go home fussing with your loved ones, your kin, people, amen, your sisters, your brothers, your daughters, your mama, your cousin, your, your neighbor. Hallelujah. No, no, go there walking in what? Power. So when you walk in a room, things ought to what? Shift. Why? You came in. I was reading this last night or yesterday, hallelujah, where Jesus walked into the synagogue and there was a man in there with an unclean spirit. Listen, he was in the synagogue, which in our day would be the church. And there was somebody in there with an unclean spirit. Say unclean. What is that, pastor? You don't want me to name that. No, any unclean spirit is anything that's demonic. Pornography is unclean. Lesbianism is unclean. Yeah. Fornication. Yeah. Lying, backbiting, whole mongering. You, you name it. Jesus walked into that. Yeah, let's see if it's Thank you, Jesus, twin. Hallelujah. Now, I didn't say stand up. I said thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. She knows she's on TV, you know. Hallelujah. That's not my wife. That's not my wife. That's not my wife. Hallelujah. Amen. I love my sister in law. Praise God. But listen, he walked into the synagogue. Jesus walked in there. He just walked in. There was a man in there with an unclean spirit. When he walked in, my God, that spirit began to what? Cut up. The devil was cut up. What, what do you think making people have? Bad behavior. Glory to God. The presence of God will stir up the demonic. People say, when the power of God comes, the devil got to go. No, not right away. He going to cut up first. He going to act out first. Why? So you can get him out. My God, there's some folk in here right now need the devil cast off of them and out of them. Pastor, that's pretty cold. No, it's the truth. Whatever's got you walking wrong, it's not of God. Whatever's got you thinking wrong, it's not of God. Whatever got you involved in things that's unholy, it's not of God. Say, get it out. Out, 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 out. Say, all the way out. Woo. So when Jesus walked into that synagogue, that man with the unclean spirit began to act up. Why? Because Jesus walked in with what? Power. When power show up, demons act up. I said, when power show up, the demonic world will what? Act up. That's like on television, you know, in our news uh, uh, corporate world, praise God. How do you let somebody get on one of the talking news programs and begin to talk about God? Man, that demon began to act up. The other person will find something to bring condemning, some kind of condemnation. Why? Because you done hit that demon. Your prayer God shook that demon. And I was listening to Brother Kilpatrick yesterday, and I'm going to send for his prophetic word that he got 11, 11 of 18. Man, it's such a word. It's so good. It's plum scary. Glory. But he said that the Lord, before he gave the word, he said the Lord told him, he quoted a scripture that has the word dread in it, dreadful. 
You know, dreadful can be, most of the time we look at it like it's so bad, it's so scary. But this is a different kind of dread. The glory of God can be what? Dreadful. You stand in awe of God. Woo, Shabbat. Man, come on, help me preach now. It's in me. Pull it out of me. Pull what's, don't let me leave half full. Let me leave empty. Glory to God. And Brother Kilpatrick said, hallelujah, that God told him to tell the church, the body of Christ, start praying for Washington, D.C. Because the dreadful presence of God is going to show up in Washington. Somebody said, glory to God. He said, he said there are going to be people walking the streets. Sinners. Hallelujah. And going to walk by a believer. And the sinner going to fall on his knees to get a crown. God save me. Said, power. That's what's coming to the body. Power. I'm not talking about play power. I'm talking about real power. Authentic power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. How many have been going through something look like you about worn out? I have. Amen. Praise God. Listen, this is not to beat you up. I mean, some of us been going through so much, we just done got so tired. Amen. Because you get weary in what? Well doing. But how do I get it back? Go back to what? Power. Because you can't get the Holy Ghost on you. Praise God. And remain like ain't nothing happened. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. You go put your hand in a 240, 220, whatever the 220 socket. Is that right? Yeah, 110, 220. Hallelujah. And stick it in that live wire and see if you're going to stand there and say, this is the day. This shit, no. Man, you're going to light up. Your body going to tremor. Why? Power. What do, you, what do you call it? A power what? Surge. What the church needs is a what? Power surge. Glory to God. What happens when the power surge happens? Some go dark and some get what? Bright. <laughs> Glory to God. I said when the church has a power surge, amen, some go what? Dark and then some go what? Bright. Say power. I need power. Yeah, ha, 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 ha. So he went into this temple about praise God, and this man had this demon in him, unclean spirit. And Jesus went in there, and the Bible said he commanded that spirit to come out of the man. He wasn't trying to destroy the man. He was trying to save the man, preserve the man. God is not trying to kill us. He's trying to what? Save us. When I tell you to get out of sin, I'm not trying to condemn you. I'm trying to bring conviction where you can be what? Saved. Hallelujah. Because save is a beautiful word to me. Say, say it. Say. Beautiful word. Because I'm say, 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 say. My God, let me go on. Hallelujah. Say, say. Yes, I'm say, say, say. He saved me. Save is a beautiful word. Can you say amen? Glory to God. And let me tell you something, young men, young women, amen. Without God, you can do nothing. I don't care what kind of degree you get. That people have been to Brown, amen. They've been to Oxford. They've been to, amen, all the fame, Berkeley, all the most uh, uh, prestigious colleges in the world. But don't know God. They, the Bible calls them nothing. Without God, you can do nothing. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. How do I get power? So how do I get power? Jesus went in there and cast that, man, cast that demon out of that man. And the people in the church began to say, oh, my, my. The Bible said they were astonished. For, amen, for he spoke the word with power and authority. What needs to be in the church? The word spoken with what? Power and what? Authority. Otherwise, all we got is three points and a poem. If you look at the general television, a preacher sometimes, it's so, it's so humanistic, it's a shame. No power. And the people leave there and say, wasn't it wonderful today? Wasn't it beautiful today? I understand why they say that because they don't know the power themselves. But if you ever, oh, taste of it and see that it is good. You can never leave without it. You can never live without it. Once God fill you, you can never live without it. Say power. Hallelujah. Power. Somebody asked me one day, what is power for? Power to live right. Power to talk right. Power to love right. You say, Pastor, they don't treat me right. You got power to love beyond their meanness. Love beyond their malice. Why? Power. 
What did I say power was? The definition was the ability to get the job what? Done. How many know the church got a job to get done? And it's not going to get it done powerless. 